Yeah, outstanding missing feature we all uh, know, uh, and that uh, user space keeps uh, pestering uh, me about sitting in the back of the room uh, is the ability uh, to query mount properties, file system properties, and so on. So in short, what we uh, have uh, seen various patch sets for um, the FS info system call by David um, Miklos worked on uh, get values um, or uh, through the X adder interface, and uh, there were various other proposals um, in the mix. And yeah, so we somehow need to come to uh, an acceptable compromise uh, for uh, for all of us that we can move forward because I think this will be. Um, this will be a pretty uh, crucial thing um, going forward. Um, and there are certain requirements or the preferences that uh, people had. Uh, my main preference is that it's not uh, uh, exposed in the form of a file system because this is a giant pain for user space usually. Uh, but uh, I, Leonard can speak to this because he will probably be a user of this. So uh, it might also be good to, to hear what, what kind of API he would prefer, what he would find useful, but even if it's just by describing the, the use case. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that uh, Linus suggested was that we have a, a stat like a system core. Uh, with the part that is uh, just just the string from uh, uh, proc self mount info, so it's uh, you have some binary binary bits and some text bits. I'm not sure uh, it's worth. So maybe maybe the simplest thing could be that it's just just the line is returned, but. Uh, we, we could have uh, such a hybrid uh, system call with, with one part, uh, with, with binary bits and, and uh, uh, text bits as well. That, that's uh, one part. The other part is about, uh, which uh, Leonard mentioned, was the listing of um, child mounts. And that's, again, I guess we could have a, a new syscall for that, which just lists uh, I guess uh, the simplest is to to return um, a list of uh, mount IDs, extended mount IDs, so the 64-bit mount IDs. And uh, but yeah, that, that's, those are just, just the ideas. Uh, if, if anyone else has <laughs> ideas, um, oh, go on. Sorry. Yeah, I've had a couple of people contact me. After Linus had his uh, uh, his input on this, uh, so he emailed me privately. I think one was uh, as, uh, from the crash dump point of view, and he said, "Please, can it? We would like something like this, but please, can it not be text because we don't like text parsing and it's slow." So. I would prefer a non-textual textual uh, <laughs> interface uh, uh, um, no, as well. To be honest. Can you recap what the could, could you recap what the objection to the FS info originally was? So I think, uh, if I may, the, the, the honest objection probably as apart from that uh, mount notification, uh, the stuff we discussed yesterday, and uh, the uh, general getting information about mounts was stuffed into one patch set. And it was just, in in one sense, I think, why Linus also reacted to it, uh, as far as I understood, is like, it was just too much code. It was like I tried. I tried to review it. I I really tried, but it was just a wall of code with nested and serialized structs. It was imp really difficult to review. Uh, so I I think if it had done a little less, it would have been way better. If we need to split this over multiple system calls, it's just my opinion. Then so what? I mean, it's not the the times where system calls were like, oh my god, don't add a system call. I think that that's over. So. Um I, I think it's okay to have uh, binary binary interfaces, but like with mounts and uh, super blocks, we have some things that are, are really difficult to uh, represent in binary. And um, I guess that's that was one of the issues with the with that patch set that it tried to do uh, this uh, 
too generically. So it was, um, and, and it's difficult to do. So, you, so I'm not sure what's, what's the solution to that. We already have a format, and Linux, uh, we, have, we, we have a text format, and yeah, it's difficult to parse, but, but we already have parsers for that, and it's not, not like, um, uh, it's, it's really, uh, the big performance issue is not with parsing uh, a single line, it's, it's with parsing the whole file. Do you wanna say something about this? So from my user space uh, perspective, I like the problem I always have with text formats is that um, splitting out the fields is always nasty, um, right? Like because of escaping and figuring out what the delimiters are. And usually um, the kernel is not very good of having a uniform logic there. It's sometimes completely crazy how it does that. So from my perspective, I'm actually fine with text formats as long as the fields are separated uh, in, in the structure. Right, like that. That would all. Like for example, what what I specifically mean by that is like I'm I'm totally happy if we get R O and R W or something back as a string, as long as those are two in separate fields or something. So, uh, but um, just to summarize from my user space perspective, what what I would love is, I would love to get at least the idea of an atomic um, reply to things. Right, like so I don't want to execute like a bunch of system calls to get the information about a, uh, uh, a super block, even though that usually that's fine. I think it would be much nicer if we could get the fields that we want a la stat x basically in one uh, blob back. Um, uh, yeah, the other thing is uh, what I just mentioned that I, I, I prefer, like for example, the mount ID or something, which is numeric, um, I don't really care if you give that in actually in a binary value or in a string, pick something just split the fields up in, in a binary way. But for, for example, would you be fine, let's say we had a mount static system call that, or, or whatever, like a system call that gives you all the information about which is extensible for a, for a super block and, uh, or for a mount, and then you get uh, the mount ID for that mount, would it be okay if you would need to use a separate system call to query for all the child mounts? Yeah, that's that's fine by me. Because the problem. I mean, is basically, I, I want the atomicity per object, but I'm I, I don't I'm, I have no illusion that getting an atomic view of more than one object. That's it's also racy. As ha I mean, yeah. the mount table constantly can constantly change. I mean, you will have to protect against yeah. this uh, against this anyway. So a snapshot of the mount namespace doesn't really make yeah. sense in the first. I, I'm point. not asking for that. I just want per object something that. But what if you so what if you had as a starting point at least an FS in whatever name it is, uh, uh, we can squabble about this, uh, FS info system call that would be a struct that encodes a core set of information that would be useful to user space. That struct is extensible. We know how to do this. We've done this uh, before. I know some people don't like it, but uh, extensible structs version by size. We use the scheme that you had with the, uh, or that um, I guess you all came up with for the static system call where you have a set of request masks, this is what I want, the information, and then a reply mask, this is the information that I have available, and then just extend it. And there can be textual format in there if it makes sense, and there can be non-textual format for stuff that doesn't make sense. Because, because it doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to encode RO or RW in, in textual form. That should just be bits, but there's certainly information where we want textual format. I think it's, important to be able to export file system specific fields like the Miklos uh, get etc uh, proposal I don't know how you want to encode that but I think it's important and it would have been nice to get something similar for statics for that matter I mean file system do have inode specific um, information that they do want to export and yeah sometimes today it exported as <laughs> We will just get, get, get RM those. No. Yeah. Like I mean, some some file systems already do that, right? Yeah, there are there are virtual extended attributes, but yeah. You might not be able to read the extended attributes. I think you have to have read permission to be able to do that. I mean, uh, uh, that you could add a new namespace, like the, well, the, the dot, and you call the, the, it the, the VSS or whatever. The check dot. happens before you get to look in the namespace. Well, that sounds like something you could yeah. fix, but I, 
anyway, but I'm just saying, like, for the specific stuff, external attributes sound, sound okay to me, but I don't know. Uh, also, I don't really care. That was proposed last year, but yeah. Um, I mean, like, in the NFS standard, there's a lot of stuff. In the SMB standard, there's a lot of stuff. But I expose it in PROC. So all of those file system specific fields are in PROC for the share and the server, all that stuff, right? The problem is, how do you tie that back to a file descriptor? Like, how do you tell, okay, that file descriptor goes with all this file system specific stuff that I've exposed? I don't know how to, how to do that, but I mean, all the info is, is visible, and I assume NFS does the same kind of thing, makes the file system specific stuff visible somewhere. So I guess I'm very nervous about file system specific information being mixed in with whatever infrastructure we do for the generic mount uh, information. Uh, and, I, and again, I think part of it is if we can do something small, it's much easier to get it reviewed. And I think we understand what the requirements are for why uh, system D or, or any sort of user space thing is trying to understand you know, what's currently mounted. There is an awful lot of additional information that is very, you know, SMB, XFS, EXD4 specific. But if that's not needed by this core use case, um, I think how we actually handle the file system specific stuff just adds a lot more complexity to the solution. And maybe we should just address that separately, right? Because, you know, a number of us do have solutions that are, you know, Sys FS EXD4 block device or whatever. But the thing is, it's really only used for debugging. And so therefore, it's not critical that it be used, you know, by something like System D. Now, if someone can articulate the use case where it's not for debugging, but in fact, something they really want for, or, you know, continuous production use as opposed to debugging, then maybe we can design that. But the thing is, Statex was fairly simple because we weren't trying to encode arbitrary amounts of file system specific information. Um, doing things using synthetic X adders is contentious. There are some people who think that is a radical abuse of that interface. And um, you know whether or not Christoph is right about that, I'd rather not have that discussion. <laughs> so so I, I'm curious. Like, so the only like FS specific information that you would get out of this conceivably right now is mount options. Do you care about mount options aside from like read only, read write, and like global things? Yeah. So you okay. There's a couple of other things we read one, like UUAD, for example, Superblock UUAD. Um, and. That's not a very specific info, but that's another topic. That's the third point that I had no. yep. because not all, most files, now, some file systems generate in a UUID, uh, but not all of them do. It's sometimes used to generate an FSID, but not always. For example, XFS generates the FSID from the device, block device. Um, and so exposing the UUID is something that would require additional work. But if we have an extensible struct, an extensible way, then it doesn't matter. And we can just expose it once every file system has a UUID, which ideally is something that we could do in the in the future, but it doesn't need to be part of that right now. But back to this file system specific question. Why couldn't that, for example, be an additional, we could punt, we can punt on this question for now, I think, and just have a core information struct that is generic for all file systems. And then we could add an additional system call that Maybe is even maybe is even, but maybe it have to be textual. So you need to query and call into the file system. Say, give me all your mount options and tell me the size of the buffer that you need. You give it a buffer, and then it gives you the mount options that are file system specific encoded as a string if you have to. Uh, it sounds all good for me, but uh, so so what I would like to see is that basically the information that in the new mount API you pass into the file system with FS config, um, kind of. In a similar way, I could get out of it, um, and that's. You mean FS query? Yeah, but again, like uh, the FS config stuff is bit by bit, and that's fine that way. I'd rather have it atomic, right? Now. Yeah, so I, I want to add something like that as well, so that I can add a mount supervisor, which we discussed earlier, 
so that you can start to mount supervisors sitting in the mount namespace. Someone inside a container can just do a mount system call, the mount supervisor can intercept it and read the, com uh, the config options and say yes, no, or just, just the config options. Another use for this is auto mounts, particularly like NFS auto mounts. We can't parameterize them because they're done by the kernel. But if the mount, we can have a mount supervisor, it can intercept that, change the parameters, and let it go. Let it, go oh, it con let it continue. So it's cha change our size. Yeah. But I need some way to read out the mount options from. So, uh, but anyway, coming from for my personal use cases, I generally only care about the generic stuff. But I know like Util Linux or something when they like the lib mount. Uh, uh, APIs that are basically, which has system you heavily uses, by the way, um, they want to have the specific stuff like the mount options uh, generally too, uh, and they will display them by default, right? Like, so if the goal is to implement what lib mount typically calls, and hence the mount binary typically calls and find mount typically, typically calls, then you have to probably cover both, right? Like the, the generic stuff and at least the mount options. And uh, it doesn't need to be lumped together in one API. They don't. So I think that like in this case, I think that it is completely okay to like have all of the generic information and then you just get a fucking string with like all of the mount options like stuffed in there. Like if you want it itemized, we could also do that, right? Like you get a, you know, give me the buffer and then like I'll tell you, okay, this is mount option A, B, C, and like you would prefer that, okay. Because I think that's a reasonable enough thing to do because we already have all of the stuff for, you know, mount info. And then it's not like, you know, every individual file system isn't going to do something crazy because we all do the same thing for showing our mount options and we just do this new thing to spit out the mount options and the buffer that you give us. And yeah, then, yeah. I mean, that, that's what I was gonna say, which is we have show mounts and in some ways my mental model of FS info is a scalable version of, you know, proc mount info that like, works when you have a gazillion mounted file systems. And so if it just returns a string for the way mount info currently returns mount options, and we aren't trying to do a crazy structured data structure thing, um, we can solve that problem. If in fact someone needs an exhaustive uh, structured thing that is more than just the mount, off and mount, off, mount info string, let's do that part later, right? But yeah. Yeah. So, so that 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 would be my my preference, and we already have a system call for that, which is uh, get etc. Which, uh, uh, Chris, uh, you can use get. Uh, I, I will let you fight with Christoph about <laughs> using get etc. for like something that isn't a real uh, extended attribute. I don't think that's a good generic approach if a specific file system wants to do it so that they don't have to actually get that reviewed by FS Devel, great. But like, you know, Christoph has flamed people in the crisp uh, for that before and there have been problems, so whatever, right? I, I just, you know, that the consist, consenting implementations in file systems, sure. There, there, is, a, there is another problem with using Git, et cetera. One thing I did in FSinfo is a way to specify the file system you want to query by the file system ID because paths are not unique and there can be file systems you can't reach. So you, the, the mount under thing, you stuck a file system there but you can't reach it. Yeah. Uh, how would your uh, query thing deal with uh, file system that gets, uh, I beg your pardon, descriptor number as mount option. And yes, that's real. Uh, yeah. There is such stuff. What, 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 what sense what? could it make for any kind of supervisor that caller of mount has something or other opened with descriptor number 69? Well, thank you. Uh, now, what do we do about that? I'm not sure I caught the question. 
uh, question I, I, about I, I, the first query actually I mean, the thing is, like, if you have an AutoFS right now, right, like, you specify an FD in where you get the notifications, and then it shows up in, 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 in Proxelf mount info as FD equals five, and you're just like, what the fuck's that supposed to mean, right? So, um, I think... Precisely. Uh, well, one thing I did was I gave every mount ob object a unique ID, new 64-bit ID, and you could get that out with... FS info, or we could do something else to get. Uh, yeah, but then uh, you could give it to FS info and say, "Tell me about this ID." So, by the way, it, just the, the 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 weird thing about the extended attribute thing is that uh, people generally understand extended attributes to be a property of the inode, right? And then you suddenly return uh, information about the file system, so that it's kind of weird, right? Like this is hard to explain to people that, oh yeah, if you use that yeah, special I, thing, I, it's I, something I, different than. I did that in air first, and I kind of wish I hadn't. This is a better way to do this. Hey, everybody. This is Derek. I got a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first is, can you actually use FS pick to pick a file system by FS ID? And the second is, does the file descriptor you get back from it actually do anything with extended attributes currently? Not so because much. I... Don't know if Christoph was objecting to the use of ex fake extended attributes generally, or just the part where people were mixing it in with actual extended attributes from real files, such that you would never know if someone had simply created an X adder with the same name as an FS attribute or where it had come from. Uh, uh, FSP just takes a path, well, a path in the FD. And, and as far as uh, you know, these uh, pseudo X adders, at least stuff like Ceph usually puts them in their own namespace. We have like you know, Ceph had like a Ceph dot you know X adder name. I think the whole X. If, if I have, sorry, I have, don't have your patch set anymore in mind. But at least the uh, the uh, X adder uh, interfaces that we currently have and the way they are implemented is just makes me go like, nope, this is not where we want things. This is like really a broken API in my opinion. Uh, I'm usually not someone who calls something a uh, shitty, but I think X adders, the current way we do it, is pretty shitty. It's type unsafe. It's really convoluted, complicated. The call paths get insane as soon as you have something like a stacking file system in the mix. So it's really not a path that I would like to go down to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we we moved we moved ACLs out. Uh, hopefully, we can move um, file system capabilities out of there as well because it's the same sort of uh, problem that we have. But uh, why couldn't this be? Um, not deeply thinking about this. Why couldn't you just have a I don't know new inode operation get uh, or superblock operation that gives you the mount info for the superblock? Huh? I mean, well, you have it. It's it's uh, show options. Oh yeah, right. See, so um, I think your textual idea for generic mount options uh, is uh, is good. I think that's good enough. That works for uh, works for util Linux and uh, probably works for uh, works for you as well. And uh, why not? Why don't we make this a separate system call, but go forward with a slimmed down, elegant version of uh, FS info? Yeah, my, my only request would be that, like you mentioned, that we would have to put a UUID in every file system first. But if we have the request, you know, if, you know, request bits and then the, the response bits like we have in StatX, you don't even need to do that. You could just, you know, the ones that have a UUID could report it. And, and yeah, so uh, currently, uh, oh, well, okay, let's, uh, why don't we aim at merging an FS info like I don't want to be settled on the uh, want to be settled on the name. I like the name, but by the end of let's try it by the end of this year, early uh, next year, and then next year. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, I, I don't care who uh, I don't care who does it. I I don't think this is magic. It's like a static system call interface. It's like copy and paste statics uh, in a way and make it suitable for for uh, generic file system information. Huh? And make it extensible. Make sure it's yeah. extensible. Did you just volunteer? <laughs> <laughs>
No, Alexa did. I just repeated him because I have the mic. No, 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 no. I, I, on, on the recording, it's only your voice. <laughs> so is what you're talking about just, I mean, fairly easy? We just had a, I don't know, a super block operation. There's, there's just a, we just export one other optional thing if a file system has file system specific stuff and the syscall looks to see no, if No, I mean, Al correctly pointed out we already have uh, Show, we already have this for for yeah. for, show, for showing the mounts, right? Yeah. So this would be like show full info or show something info, and and we're done. I mean, but the only problem is it has to be extensible. What isn't? It? it has to be sensible. Extensible, extensible. Yeah. So okay, so that that deal is uh, that would deal with the uh, uh, information for the mount. But what what about the uh, list of child mounts? So that's that's what I asked at the beginning. That could also be, unless there are strong objections, that could also be a separate system call, right? Query for the uh, child mount IDs, and then be able to query information based on those uh, IDs. Yeah. Huh? So, uh, so the FS info, whatever it's going to be called, gives you the parent, and the this other call would give you the children. Yes. Sounds good to me. I, with the understanding that <coughs> because of how... Well, the, the, the thing is, I don't... Uh, the thing this, uh, I, that would probably require you to have uh, uh, a substruct within the uh, FS info struct and then you're back to... Huh? Yeah, but I mean, then you have a, a variable length. Uh, yeah, but, but wouldn't it be nicer? Wouldn't it be nicer if you had it in a separate system call and you could query uh, how much space do I need for these mount IDs or whatever? Yeah, I I think there's like we. I I think having arrays embedded in struct variable length arrays is just terrible. I fully agree. Like, I mean, you're basically implementing your own marshalling system and type system, and that's, don't get into this if you don't have to. Remember, we're looking for a consensus, and we have a coffee break to get to. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is, why is it, what, what is it, the, 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 the thing is, if you can split functionality, mounting doesn't have to be fa necessarily fast, and uh, getting mount information also doesn't necessarily have to be fast. Mount notifications have to be fast. What is so, what is so problematic if we say, don't, let's not stuff it into a single system call, let's just split it over multiple system calls. Race is theoretically. Sorry, yeah. Sorry uh, 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 could you repeat, Al? Theoretically, if you want uh, atomic picture, you uh, well, you don't get any kind of uh, atomicity if you s spread it uh, over several set of calls. But I think so that's... if that's a strong requirement. I don't think so. Uh, so the atomicity, I think, is only about information about the object itself. But if finding out the children, or the uh, that's not information about the object itself so much. That is uh, constantly changing. So I think it's fine if that part is separate. So uh, um, yes, I like uh, atomic interfaces where it can get something of a consistent view of the object. But uh, once it uh, touches the relationship to other objects, I don't think. I mean, I will not make. Like, don't. This sounds like asking for too much. Uh, so, uh, so, so I wanted to to mention: can uh, can we make sure that uh, that any new system calls have documentation and tests? <laughs> <laughs> every system call I ever added has tests and documentation. Okay. So okay. So, so about the atomicity, um, we uh, your uh, David Spetz uh, said uh, had uh, added a version number to uh, this. To, to mounts, so basically anything uh, that changed the mount would uh, uh, bump the version number, and this could also be uh, returned from from this discourse, and then you would know if uh, if anything changed, or they yeah. they refer to the same version. Uh, per object or per mount tree. Does version apply just to the object? 
just to one mount or to the entire uh, mount tray? What, what, what I did was put a version number on each mount, because when you've got a lot of mounts... Okay. So it's, when I returned the list of children, it was a list of actual tuples, ch child version, that child, child version, child version, child version. Mm. Got to make looking interesting. <laughs> Worked. <laughs> RC, I, think, I think I actually used RCU, but... Uh, uh, okay, I think we uh, need to call it and uh, we can go to the coffee break. We, I Hopefully we can all remember the good spirit on the, li <laughs> on the list, please.